Thank you. My name is Marianne Thieme and I'm a member of parliament for the Party for the Animals in the Netherlands. And our party is the very first in the world to champion the rights of non-humans in a national parliament. However, there are other problems in the world aside from animal welfare. So tonight I'm going to tell you some very hard truths about what we are doing to our planet. And I'm so pleased that you are ready to face up to these realities. If you look at the 10 hottest years ever measured, they've all occurred in the last 14 years. The world is heating up fast and we have ourselves to blame. Global warming is real, and we humans are almost certainly the cause. Global warming, that's the world's greatest current concern. Everyone finds themselves in his grip, from scientists to politicians to the Secretary General of the UN, and even Leonardo DiCaprio. We face a convergence of crises. Industrial civilization has caused irreparable damage. By the middle of the century, there may be 150 million environmental refugees. Not only is it the 11th hour, it's 11.59. But it's that other film made by Nobel Prize winner Al Gore, which has truly succeeded in putting this global problem on the map. An inconvenient truth was a real wake-up call to the world. This was a great achievement for Al Gore. However, he forgot something rather important. The consequences of global warming are enormous. The climate researchers from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change have estimated that by the year 2100, one to three billion people will be in dire need of fresh water. Hunger will increase throughout large parts of the globe. So, it should come as no surprise that global warming is currently our foremost concern. Everyone who has seen Al Gore's film knows that our Earth is in bad shape. Greenhouse gas emissions must be reduced. This is on the agenda of every world leader. The causes of global warming must be dealt with now. And so, together we must identify the greatest emitters of greenhouse gases in our society. What do you think? What are the sources of greenhouse gases? The, the cars we're driving and the water waste and all the trash we don't care where, where we're throwing it. That's what I think. Cars, buses. It's industry, it's gasoline, it's energy use. All the fumes from car. Cars, too many vehicles maybe. Fumes in the air, all the gas and people driving in the city. Cars, factories. Planes. I imagine the aviation industry hasn't helped. I mean, one airplane can fly across country and it's like 40 tons of, of carbon. 40 tons, that's a lot. I think in one word I would say pollution. Coal power stations, gas power stations. People using more energy than they need to. We are wasting a lot. Of An excessive use of, of gases. And also coal burning stations, especially in China. All the pollutants that we pump into the air day after day. Everyone says the same thing. It's the cars, the planes, the industrial plants. It's because we leave our lights on and take long showers. Always the same familiar answers. And, well, yes, of course it's true. But no one has yet won the grand prize. Because we're forgetting one extremely important factor. 18% of global greenhouse gas emissions are caused by livestock farming. That might surprise you. Farmed animals, 18%. And guess what percentage of total global emissions are caused by transport? 13%. Just think, all the cars, tractors, Trucks, ships and planes in the world added together emit fewer greenhouse gases than livestock farming. Oh really? Wow, I thought it was mostly cars. 
Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Livestock. That's crazy. It's so more than the cars. Are you serious? Yeah, I, I didn't know that. That's insane. No, I did not know that. No. Uh, that's news to me. I've never heard that. I'd never heard the livestock connection, no. Well, I knew there was some. I had no idea it was that extensive. How does it come from livestock exactly? What do you call cow farts? <laughs> what do you call that? Okay. Yeah, the methane gas coming from the cows. Yeah. It's cow shit, right? Doesn't cow poop? It's the, what the emissions, right? I thought it was just fat people in the south here in America, but no, apparently it's cattle as well. It's quite worrying. <laughs> okay. But I saw an article that say uh, because the cow, what they fast, mm -hmm. and then actually the fasting make the global warming. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> yeah. But how how can it be that farm animals place a heavier burden on the environment than the entire transport sector worldwide? Well, actually, it's rather simple. Once upon a time, a farmer was someone who owned land and some animals. Nice and quiet around here. If there was more land, then he bought some more pigs, a few chickens, and some cows. Well, that's a fine kettle of fish. You know what? All that grubbing around outside takes far too long. We're going to fatten you up and fast. It's not a fairy tale storybook. You're there to be eaten. Oh, uh, not sure that's such a compliment, really. We'll squeeze you all together nice and efficiently, and you'll all get sick right away. You're telling me. Listen, Piggy, I'm not interested in your personal vision right now. In the Netherlands alone, you lot produce 70 billion kilos of dung. Do you know how bad that is for the environment and the climate? Uh, sorry for living. Did you know that cows of all farm animals are the largest producers of greenhouse gases, mostly through all that belching and farting? Do you know what the problem is? You're eating us out of house and home. Who was just so pleased about fattening us up? But all that food has to come from somewhere, doesn't it? So, we destroy the rainforests and plant soya crops instead. But the rainforests are really important for the absorption of carbon dioxide. And then we spray the stuff with pesticides and we ship the soya off to Europe where it ends up in your feeding troughs. So well organized. What are you people up to? Oh, oh. Well, that's not our fault. <laughs> Who actually wants to eat meat anyway? The consumer, okay? Is there something wrong with that? Well, that's a good question. Who actually eats so much meat? Eating meat is a luxury that we've got all rather too used to. Don't dare touch our steaks. Keep your hands off our barbecues. But once it becomes clear that all this meat is making a major contribution to the destruction of our Earth. Shouldn't we think again? And yes, I hear some of you thinking, here we go again, yet another vegetarian fanatic. But I'm certainly not the only one who's worried about this issue. I'm farm manager. We farm a thousand hectares of land in uh, mid Wales. Uh, we have around 800 head of cattle, including uh, 550 dairy cows. We have 3,000 head of sheep, um, and we grow some arable crops. We can't deny it as farmers, as agriculturists, that uh, methane produced by cows contributes um, to global warming. I'm David Davis. I work at the Institute of Biological, Environmental and Rural Sciences at Aberystwyth University. Cows have a very complex digestive tract, more complex than humans. Within their stomach, they are able to digest plant fiber, and humans cannot. 
To do that, they need a very complex mix of bacteria and fungi and protozoa within their digestive system. Now, these microorganisms do not have access to oxygen, and the food that we eat as people gets converted into carbon dioxide and water. Because ruminants in the rumen don't have access to oxygen, they need to produce a different range of end products. And one of the key ones from the rumen is methane. When you compare with carbon dioxide, methane is 21 times more potent. The cow eats the feed in front of it, um, and it goes into its stomach, and, and as a result of that, the cow burps a lot. And this uh, gas, which is produced when the animal burps, uh, is one of the, the gases uh, linked to warming and the greenhouse effect. Every cow and every ruminant regurgitates its food into the mouth to chew, and this enables the, the microorganisms in, in the stomach to actually get better access to that feed. And whilst they're regurgitating it, they're actually releasing methane. So every time the cud, as it's called, comes into the mouth, a small amount of gas will also be released, and this will contain a large proportion of methane. No, we don't notice anything about it, because it's just a, a natural process which occurs in all ruminants. The dairy cow that's producing eight to 10,000 litres of milk every year will produce around five to 700 litres of methane every day. So your average cow will produce around 700 litres of methane per day. This is equivalent to the amount of greenhouse gas CO2 emissions produced by a big four by four vehicle traveling around 35 miles per day. The ruminant population within the world is probably growing um, and it has to grow in line with the growth in population in order to feed that population. I think it should concern everybody. In 2006, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN, the FAO, published an important report which first brought the link between livestock farming and climate change to light. I'm now going to speak to Dr. Henning Steinfeld, the chief author of this report. Dr. Steinfeld, you have calculated that livestock farming is responsible for 18% of greenhouse gas emissions. That's quite a lot. In fact, 18% is quite a lot. It has to do with the fact that in this assessment we took into account all the changes in land use that are related to livestock, the production of animals in terms of methane, the manure management in terms of also methane and nitrous oxides, and the various steps of the feed production, livestock production, processing, transport, and so on, that have to do with livestock and feed commodities. And this is how you get to 18%. OK. How did you respond to yourself when you were confronted with these figures? I knew it was high. I knew also the impact on water and biodiversity was going to be very significant. I didn't expect it to be quite as high, but uh, this is the figure we came up with. And what do you think? What was the most shocking, amazing conclusion from your report? Well, I think one of the issues is that uh, this uh, huge environmental impact that livestock have is not well understood by the public. It is not even well understood by the